morning. I'm here with Damon John, entrepreneur, fashion mogul, and creator of FUBU brand clothing, as well as one of the sharks of ABC's hit show, Shark Tank. Yep. Damon, thank, thank you for you joining me. I gotta tell you, it's a real inspiration to have somebody like you. I've heard you speak, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that you were able to join us today. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. So, um, Damon, one of, I'm creating a book, or created a book, called The Creative Minds. And what it is, it's a practical manual. Mm -hmm. Like you, I was raised in New York, in Brooklyn. I came from a broken home. Um, my uh, mom worked in a factory and basically I put myself through college and through law school. And I started my own firm three years ago, Seller Law, with $37 and, on a credit card and, and a prayer. And in the first year, I earned about $100,000. The second year was about a million. And in 2012, we closed at about $25 million. Oh, but you know, and but what I noticed is, as a child, you know, I always dream that I could be whatever I can, and we always do as children. But somewhere along the way, somebody tells us we're not good enough, and over time, we start to hear that more and more, and less of how we can accomplish our dreams and do anything. And I wanted to know specifically from you: is this something that you've encountered as you were growing up? I, I did encounter it as I grew up, but um, my family, my mother, most of all, told me that I could do better and told me that I was worth more and a lot of times you know we don't hear it just from our family we see it in media and in public you know we see it on TV and this and that I mean and we 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 see that and we put our own chains on, our, on ourselves but um, it's really from the people around you that that it's important your family your loved ones you know and, and the people you form partnerships with that can help you. Now, do you notice also that sometimes even people close to us, they mean well, but they're really going through their own life experiences and, and it's almost a vicious cycle where people tell them that they can't do anything and, and, and sometimes it's better to, to keep it from them just to keep that fire inside of you alive. Well, it's true. You know, uh, I speak often about goal setting um, and goal setting can be used in a negative aspect as well. If you setting a goal mentally that you will never find a mate or you will never get anywhere or nobody of your color or of your gender ever has done this, it can't happen. You just set a mental goal against yourself as well. So a lot of times you do have to keep it amongst yourselves because you know, you're the only one that's gonna believe in you. If you don't believe in yourself, then who else is gonna believe in you? Right, and over time that fire's a little bit snuffed out so yeah. it's a dull amber and it could be extinguished by other people if you let it or it can turn into a raging. Absolutely. Fire. Okay, excellent. And uh, I talk about the creative mind and, and how people can creatively succeed in business. And what I've learned along the way is that I would take a business that's stagnant and maybe it's breaking in and maybe it's losing money, but I put my own creative twist in it and all of a sudden I find myself a pioneer in an industry that doesn't exist. Right. Have you created that in your own business, in your own entrepreneurship? Well, you know, I often say that there is absolutely nothing that you're going to do new in the world. Um, you know, I didn't put three sleeves on a t-shirt, you know, uh, I always give the example that Twitter was a note on a pigeon's leg a uh, thousand years ago. So it's always going to be a new creative twist, a new angle that's going to make it happen. But there's absolutely nothing new that, in the world. So it's all about branding, uh, positioning, you know, improvement and development. He, they always said even Steve Jobs was more of a tweaker than a creator. He would find things and he would tweak it. And, you know, life is about tweaking, right? Sure, absolutely. And I know that there are a lot of books, there are hundreds of books out there, metaphysical books, that say, put it out there and it will just come to you uh, without any action on your part. Mm -hmm. And I know that action, at least in my life, and I'm sure in your life, is a really big part of what makes things happen. So some people are scared to dream or go after their dreams, but uh, as I heard you in many of your talks, you, you talk about taking that step and keep swimming and keep moving forward. Yeah. How would you, how, what advice would you give to somebody else who has that idea but is so fearful of it not going Well, I through? think that you, you have to take small steps if you're really fearful, but you have to go in a certain direction. If you suffer from what we call analysis paralysis, then you'll never move. But, you know, it, you know some people want to just go and bet the farm and just quit their job and start something. But if you just put one hour or two hours a week into something, you know, after a year, it compounds and it becomes more time and more time. And I think that you should always just take one small step. If you can set your goals to take one action a week or one action a day towards this new venture or this concept, you would be very surprised on how far you get after a certain amount of time. I, I agree. And, and myself, uh, I'm one of those people where I'm up at three in the morning and I, I go to the gym and I plan my day for three hours. And, and I really demand three steps for me to move forward every day. Well, people today, they want immediate gratification and there's the saying that people overestimate what they can accomplish in one year and they underestimate what they can accomplish in 10. Interesting. You know? Okay. And my final question is family. 
how do you juggle it all? Do you, do you turn it off? That, that's very difficult for me to, 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 as I grow, to just turn off that phone because there's always something. And the more success I achieve, the more I have to be available on the phone. And I have a wife and three children, three girls, and, and that's my sacred time. And I want to have that time for them. But how, how do you manage it all? It's challenging. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm challenged with that every day. On, you know, on, on, you think about it on one side, if we didn't have those digital devices, then we'd have to be literally stuck in the office and we wouldn't have any time at all. But on the flip side, if you know the office is a mental thing and it's in our mind, then we're never with our kids, even when we're physically with our kids. Sure. What do we do? So, I mean, that really is challenging. I, you know, we try. My family and I, we try to, you know, when we're at dinner, no, no communication besides with everybody at the table, and we try to. I try to say, hey, you know, girls, I'm going to my room for a little while, and I try to knock out everything, and then I'll leave my stuff in the room, but. That is, a, that is a challenge, and I can't say that I've mastered that you know, totally yet, but it's an ongoing. As long as you acknowledge it and you see that there is a problem with it, right. you know what, matter of fact, we can barely stop texting and driving. We know we may lose our lives doing right. that, right? So it's, a, it's really a challenge, and we have to always keep that in mind. Sure, and emails are supposed to save time. That, that, that was the, the point, yeah. and we find ourselves addicted to phones and trying to manage everything. But again, I want to thank you for coming out. You really have an inspiration to myself and to many other viewers out there. Thank you.